Hey guys, my name is Shai. Welcome to a starseed transmission coming through from the Orion system. This is kind of impromptu for me. I wasn't expecting to be doing this right now, but I was meditating and I was sensing, I don't know, I think you could call them the Orion Council of Light, if you want to use that term. To me, I was just seeing them as beings made of white light and you know, through that way that is kind of hard to describe, <laughs> I could sense them coming through from Orion. And that makes sense given that the general message I was tuning into was about resolving polarity and coming into a place of unity. All about coming into unity. It, you can actually, that's why I'm actually holding this uh, selenate wand. If you can imagine all kinds of different energy, you know, gets absorbed by the selenite and it streams out as, you know, clean, cleansed and pure and just white light. It's kind of like how a prism takes in, can, can take in a rainbow and spit out white light or, you know, take in white light and spit out a rainbow. It goes, it goes either way. Um, right now, I think it's more of your solar plexus and your sacral chakra. It's almost like they're becoming one, like they were never supposed to be separate. They are only separate energy centers because of because of us living down here on Earth in this duality-based, linearly-based experience. And when you're tuning into this reading, no matter when you're tuning into it, you have done sufficient work on your solar plexus and your sacral chakra and really all kinds of duality-based paradigms in your life that everything is beginning to resolve and you are starting to understand unity on a level that might have seemed that might seem radical to you radical to you from a year ago definitely unity everything you're starting to see how everything is coming into unity and it starts within you so that it was the <laughs> general thing i was getting beforehand and i'm using this kitty cat deck it is the Grimalkin Tarot. I don't know what cats have to do with Orion. Normally we think of Lyra with cats, but the deck has so much bright yellow uh, and orange in it. I felt like it was somehow related to the that vibe I was feeling about the solar plexus and the sacral chakra. So this is what we got. We got the Celtic cross here. And I love that the first, your center self, the center card, the center issue of all of this is the magician talk about resolving um resolving elements unifying elements we have it all here you know the sword for air your mind the wind this cup for water your emotions your right mind your intuition you know the pentacle for the earth and your physical abundance and the wand for your passion your fire your manifestation this magician, this black kitty cat, and I can hear my own black kitty cat who actually looks a lot like this guy, almost exactly. My cat is a little bit fluffier than this maybe, but <laughs> looks almost exactly the same. He is outside my door meowing, so he agrees. <laughs> this is, you are literally stepping into your role as the magician, as the magician, and that is being crossed by the seven of wands. So you're <laughs> feeling perhaps like you are not quite there yet you know that you know that you resonate with the, the archetype of the magician i think some of you have probably heard me talk about this before um you know you're familiar with the archetype of the hero's journey and if you think about any story every hero has a magician it's the archetype of the hero and the magician you know if captain kirk is the hero spock is his magician if frodo is the hero gandalf is his magician and it's funny, I just watched Excalibur and, you know, King Arthur is the hero. Merlin is the magician. And <laughs> I really resonate with the magician archetype as this kind of outsider figure, um, but who has, you know, otherworldly skills. You guys are starseeds, you know, you know what I mean. And interest in the occult, interest in the esoteric. Somebody who's, who kind of sacrifices their, almost sacrifices their humanity, um, or at least their ability to engage in 
the normal human experience. You know, you think of all the magicians I just listed, you know, Gandalf, he's not exactly like everybody else. And he, he is an outsider. He is a guide. He is an outsider. And he wouldn't be able to be the powerful figure that he is if he was too closely, you know, engaged in the normal existence. Same with Spock. He's not even fully human. He's only half human. <laughs> and everybody thinks he's weird, but he wouldn't be able to be Spock if he weren't exactly Spock. You know, Merlin, and depending on what, you know, King Arthur story you're reading, you know, in some of them it says that he, he's actually from another world. And it's funny that I'm talking about Orion because that movie Excalibur uh, is like made by Orion Productions. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure those people who were making that that horrible, cheesy old 80s movie that I love <laughs> uh, were starseeds, were Orion starseeds, whether they knew it or not. If they didn't know it, they were channeling it and didn't know it. So anyway, so you guys are all embodying the magician archetype and that is why it is so important that you have been and continue to unify, to unify everything but also your solar plexus and your sacral chakra and so for it to be crossing by the seven of wands i think you're feeling a little bit like the outsider right now like i was just talking about you are feeling that or it's like you felt this all your life you've always felt like the outsider you've always felt like the alien you've always been alienated and but now you're starting to realize that with it's a trade-off. It is a total trade-off. You cannot be who you are. You cannot have the skills and interests and knowledge and wisdom and power that you do without being a bit of an outsider. It is it is like a prerequisite. It is necessary. And it's also just a side effect. It's all rolled in. All rolled in. You know, Spock will, <laughs> Spock will never be able to be fully human because he's just not. He's only... <laughs> half human. He can learn to engage with the humans, you know, he can learn to fit in as well as he can and as well as, as well as he likes to, but it's just he wouldn't have all of the strengths that he does without being exactly who he is. It's kind of hard to articulate. I think you guys know what I'm saying, right? Because this is you. You are feeling you're really understanding that is it is important for you to be an outsider on some level because that is part of the package of who you are and instead of being alienated by that or being feeling oppressed by it or just feeling sorry for yourself i know we've all felt sorry for ourselves in the past right but you guys are you're kind of done with that and you're really understanding that you are just really stepping into your role you're stepping into your unification as your unified self and understanding that that also allows you to unify with the rest of the collective because they might have their role to play as the hero. Some some other person in your life, if you are the magician in your life, you're going to be, you already either already have your hero or you are going to be meeting them shortly. You know, we, me and my husband always joke, you know, that he's the hero and I'm the magician. And we both love that. I wouldn't want to be the hero and he wouldn't want to be the magician. He wants to be the hero, you know, charging off, um, without knowing what he's getting into to go fight a dragon. He wants to do that and he wants to have the magician guide him. So um, that is another layer of this unification going on, the solar plexus and the sacral chakra. You are going to be finding your counterpart. You're going to be finding your hero. And I don't, I don't mean, I think you guys understood, right, that I don't mean the hero that saves you. I mean the hero that you get to work in partnership with, you know, Kirk and Spock, Gandalf and Frodo, King Arthur and Merlin. And you can think, you could... I'm sure right now you're thinking of a whole whole more list of every story you've ever read, every movie you've ever watched. There's always a hero and a magician. That is the archetype archetypes we're talking about here. So, um, yeah, so your recent past is the Six of Wands, and you've recently had a little bit of a victory. That is how you're coming into this moment of empowerment and unifying yourself because things are finally, finally starting to work out for you. The Six of Wands is not your ultimate, your ultimate break or the ultimate finish line, because, you know, there never is an ultimate finish line, but it is a moment where you get to go, wow, things are, like, something finally worked. Maybe it's been five years and you feel like life has just been, you know, hitting you in the face and finally something worked. So recently, um, a little something gave you a glimmer of hope, like seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. And this is going to be really... It, you're having your moment in the sun. Look at this. Look at this six of wands. This kitty cat sitting on the fence, 
with their laurels in the sunshine. This is, you've won the battle. The war is not over, but you've won the battle. And coming up in your near future, the hermit in reverse. We'll take a look at it like this. The hermit. So this is always <laughs> that cat and this, I love this, that cat looking at this firefly. The hermit is obviously that really solitary card. Doesn't, t doesn't take a genius to know that, but it's also about lighting your own lamp. You go, you go within to, you know, stoke your own fire, to learn your own wisdom, to learn everything from within. And with this in reverse, I don't, I don't take this to be a compounding thing. I don't think this is making it extra her hermit. I think this is releasing the hermit because you're coming into the magician archetype and you're coming into this unification paradigm where you're going to be able to share your wisdom as the magician, as the wizard, you know, what, whatever, as the witch, as the light worker, as the star seed, whatever, you know, just use magician. I I'm going to use that word because that's the archetypal word, but whatever word does it for you, use that one in your head. You're going to be sharing all the wisdom that you have learned, all the skills that you have with the world. For some of you, this can absolutely be stepping into some kind of leadership role or just a more active role in your family, with your friends, in your community, with some kind of blog, with any kind of anything, however, your creative projects, a business, however you share your message with the world, that is going to be you're going to be feeling the call. You're going to be feeling the call to step more into that. And yeah, actually right here, your, your self position, I know I'm jumping around a bit, but we got to go with how it is. Your self position is judgment, which is about that spiritual justice. And, but it is also about sharing your message with the world. And I like, is this a tombstone? This tombstone looks like a key to me. Something's been unlocked. Something's been unlocked and it is Finally, I'm feeling, um, this also has to do with your throat chakra, I think. Finally unlocking a block to your throat chakra so that you can share your message because what good is a magician or a witch or a light worker or a starseed who just sits there by themselves forever? The hermit energy is extremely important for all of us to go through and it is one of my favorite cards in the tarot, but one of the things I had to learn was that I can't just sit in isolation in my ivory tower on my mountaintop alone forever. Eventually, no matter how much I don't want to, no matter how introverted I am, I eventually need to step out. And for me, that was, you know, starting this YouTube channel was me just taking my first baby steps into doing that. So I don't want to talk too much about the details of how this stepping out into the world might manifest for you because that is just a pattern of energy and you are all are just beautiful special snowflakes who will unfold this pattern in your own way and it doesn't matter at all how you do it it is just that this is your nudge this is your call from the universe to step out and come down out of your mountain i'm really reminded of has anybody ever read nietzsche's thus spake Zarathustra at the beginning of that book uh, talks about you know the main character Zarathustra had you know sat alone in the mountains lived by himself for 10 years and he loved every second about it you know he was away from the stupid humans and he could just you know listen to the birds and feel the wind and look at the water and he lived in perfect peace and harmony and silence with his own self and just with nature and he loved it but eventually he realized that he needed to have his down going. That's the translation from the German that is used, his down going, where he has to come down out of the mountains and descend and kind of slum it up with the plebeians. And, you know, and he has to do that in order to share his message. He has to share what he learned. That is literally the hermit reversed. So that's what's going on here. And in your crowning position, your highest potential, Queen of Pentacles, and you know your outcome card is also the page is the page of pentacles so this is where you're stepping up and stepping out because the pentacle energy is that earth energy it is grounded it is you know in touch with gaia it is balanced and it is also it has to do with your material physical reality and its abundance and its comfort with the queen that is much comfort with the page there's a certain level of innocence and sense of play there so lots of lots of good things coming your guys's way in your material world and 
I think it's important for starseeds to remember that when we achieve a certain level of abundance and prosperity and ease and comfort in our physical reality that that is actually like the energetics of that is really important it's not just oh okay now our lives get to be easier and more comfortable and you know some people i know there's been a history in spirituality of you know wanting to be an aesthetic or you know thinking that we have to deny ourselves this and that you know we shouldn't pursue material comforts because that distracts us from our path but as some of you have heard me say before, that is, I really see that as a past paradigm and moving forward, we want to be moving into our abundance because if we can get ourselves into a place of abundance, we are holding abundance frequencies and using the law of resonance, everybody else will tune up to that. And of course, most of us, I don't feel are <laughs> particularly abundant right now because most of us have incarnated in lives where we had to struggle, struggle, struggle. That is what starseeds do. We come into the struggle so that we can evolve out of it and that frees up that energetic pattern and that helps everybody else. It's like, you know, uh, trailblazing, right? We're energetically clearing a trail through those energetic patterns. So when you do find yourself in a place of more abundance, never feel bad about that. That is a service. So you get to enjoy it too. You get to be of service and you get to enjoy it at the same time. So I think everybody seeing this is going to be seeing a at least a moderate improvement <laughs> in their financial, physical, home, just reality, mundane situations. It is on the up and up, guys. It is on the up and up. And yeah, in your kind of deep past down here, nine of wands, it has been a bit of a long journey. It has been a long journey. I know there might be a couple of you who have had material abundance. Um, and I can actually remember past lives where I did incarnate in a place where I was given, where I, I, was, in, I was born in a rich family. That wasn't most of my lives, but I can think of one in particular where I was, I was rich growing up and I was given everything. And, you know, so just to throw that out there, if you do happen to, you know, have lucked out with your material abundance, or if you had chosen to incarnate in this lifetime where you had wealth, don't feel bad about that either, because that just means that you had other problems. And it's funny looking back, it was actually my most recent past life where I was born rich and wealthy. Um, and I have a lot of baggage actually because of that now, because of, uh, I actually have Chiron in my eighth house, which Obviously, there's a lot going on there, but um, 8th House is also other people's money. So I literally have trauma and baggage because of other people's money, because my parents were rich and they held this over me. And I had to, you know, deny a lot of parts of my life. And I had to just live under their thumb, even as an adult. You know, I became a, I had to follow a specific career and all of that. And it was like this money was hanging over my head. And yeah, sure, I might have been rich, but I never enjoyed it. It sucked. And I literally have... I don't know if you can call if you want to call it karma. I I'll just say that I have baggage because of that. I have baggage because of that. So if you do have wealth, well, that just means you have other problems. <laughs> and for you, that means these uh this is clearing out. Those problems are clearing out. This is all about problems clearing out because the nine of wands is this long journey finishing up and you're feeling tired, you're feeling fatigued, you're feeling like you wanna throw in the towel, like you feel like a wet cat. You think a wet cat is happy? No. <laughs> No, a wet cat is not happy, but that's coming. You're shifting out of that because of the Queen of Pentacles and the Page of Pentacles. So very good. <laughs> very good. And moving over here, we have in your environment, the chariot. I love this. These, these uh, two horses, because we were the whole theme here is about unification, right? This is almost like a two-headed horse. And if you can imagine driving a chariot being driven by two horses, what if they decided to go in two different directions? That wouldn't work out very well for anybody. And of course, any kind of polarity, any polarized energy wants to go in two different directions. And so your job as the charioteer, or in this case, just as the starseed who is holding energy is to harmonize these poles, to get these two horses to work together, to get your solar plexus and your sacral chakra to work together. Harmonizing polarities harmonizing polarities and bringing them into unity. That is, that is exactly 
exactly what you're doing and your hopes and fears. Yeah, now I know why I was talking a little bit about like feeling bad, like feeling guilty, um, feeling like maybe you shouldn't have abundance or you shouldn't have comfort or you shouldn't have this or shouldn't have that. Uh, because even though you want this perfect, perfect divine love, perfect bliss, this Ace of Cups, this is a blissful card. This is like a cat getting into the cream, you know, uh, and you want that. Of course you want that. You hope for that. You dream for that. But you're also afraid of it because of what that might mean. Maybe you'd be feeling that you're no longer, it's like somebody who has been working overtime like a lot, a lot, a lot for a long time. Um, and then they finally get like two months off and they can't stop. You, you, you know, you, some of you have probably done that. If you haven't done that, you've seen people who finally have free time and they just keep finding something to do. They just compulsively do, 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 do. And they feel like, oh, well, I have to be working. I have to be busy. I have to be doing because doing is productive and I can't just chill. I can't just chill. What would that mean? That I'd be lazy. So I don't really, I don't think I need to go into a whole lecture about, you know, how you don't need to be productive all the time. And sometimes how the most productive thing you can do is just taking a nap or meditating or just daydreaming. Because I don't think that is the real issue here. That is like a shadow energy. That is a fear and anxiety you have in the back of your mind. But look at all the rest of the good cards here. That is all going to be fading away. It's fading away. And you guys already know all about that. And actually, the bottom of your deck was the moon. So exactly. And, you know, it was. I'm filming this the day after the full moon in Capricorn, which was also a penumbral eclipse. So, <laughs> yeah, the moon... Uh, these, those illusions, these fears of your success, those fears of being the magician, these fears of your manifesting power are starting to fade away. All of that is fading away because of this theme of unity. And yeah, would just like to invite you guys to think out, to think about how unity, how the theme of unity is playing out in your life. That is I mean, it's not so much that I care if you do that, but I can feel that coming through from this, I guess I'll call them the Orion Council of Light, these Orion light beings I am uh, tuning into. They want you to think about themes of unity and how you can tune into the highest frequency of unity. Yeah, I'll, I'll just, <laughs> I'll let you guys think on that. Um, I'm going to grab my Oracle cards. Okay. We the Hathors, deep love, mother's milk, birth as a portal. This is really cool. I mean, first of all, I love the Hathors. I'm really in tune with them. So this is them coming through as well for you guys. And but I'm really drawn to birth as a portal here, birth as a portal. Because think about, if we're thinking about unity, what is, what is the human or like any biological organism that has been born because of sexual reproduction? That is the extreme biological unification of a sperm and an egg. <laughs> I'm getting such a strong image of that. Isn't that interesting how we are literally walking biological machines that only exist because of the unification of a masculine cell and a feminine cell? Wow, this is, this is, can you guys sense the significance to that, think about how we literally grow out of an egg and a sperm, right? <laughs> I mean, I know we all know that, but if you think about that in light of the theme of unification, it's very fascinating because we are, to our cells, you know, I don't know how many cells are in the human body, right? <laughs> trillions, trillions. So to our cells, we are a universe and we think of ourselves as a singular being, but we are collectives. We are a collective of all of our cells, all of our sub personalities, all of our sub archetypes, all of our organs. You know, each organ is like a galaxy of cells. 
and we are the universe walking around and of course we think we're so small and of course to the cosmos we are but a cell but to ourselves we are the universe and we grow up that is the power of unification that is the message here that is the power of unification when you unify a sperm and an egg so and it that's just i think just part of the metaphor here when you take two tiny things as tiny and as useless on their own as a sperm and an egg and unify them then look at the potential that can grow it literally become it could become a universe you can take one tiny thing that can't do anything by itself another tiny thing that can't do anything by itself bring them together and unify them and you have you can you can grow up to become an entire universe <laughs> that that has got to be one of the stranger messages i have ever uh received but that is very interesting <laughs> serious energy bringing harmony and balance bringing harmony and balance so apparently this reading was a lot more co-creative than i thought it's not just the orions coming through it is also the hathors and the syrians bringing harmony and balance and that is really cool because as some of you already know um orion and sirius are themselves a a polarity you know orion holds at least this corner of the galaxy or for our kind of greater collective orion holds the feminine paradigm and sirius holds the masculine paradigm so this reading would not be able to be about unification and unity if and you know coming from orion if sirius wasn't also involved and that's funny because before this i was actually getting um like intuitive hits about sirius but i didn't quite clue into why that was important <laughs> so on a greater level on a greater level we are actually working to harmonize Orion and Sirius because that level of uni unity cannot occur in either Orion or Sirius because they are separate uh, you know because you can't you can't do that right you you know you you can't unify something in the location of one of the poles right you need to go to the center space so earth is acting as the middle ground for Orion and Sirius. We are like the neutral territory. We are the no man's land. We are the middle ground where we have gone because you guys have, we have all had lives in Orion. We have all had lives in Sirius and we took those karmic patterns that played out there. Those, you know, those soul patterns, those energetic patterns, we brought them here to earth. And this is a neutral territory where we can harmonize those poles. We did Orion came to unity by itself, Sirius came to unity by itself, and then here we are bringing that all together, bringing it all together and playing out another unity paradigm here. That is, um, that is a large, <laughs> significant, broad sweeping message that I did not expect and I had never thought about before. Maybe I should do readings holding a selenite wand more often. <laughs> so I think that is it for that deck. Do I want to bring anything else out? I think that's actually going to be the end of the reading. Normally I would draw a couple more oracle cards, but I feel like that's good. So thank you so much for tuning in, guys. And thank you so much for doing your inner work and for walking your path and participating in the project of unity for those who wish to step into unity i think an important uh conclusion to this message is that sometimes we worry about unification obviously humans we always worry about a one world government and stuff right because we f we fear that unity means a loss of individualization and we especially fear that it means a loss of freedom and we humans we have a lot of baggage about that we feel that unity would mean that those that it it's almost 
I can't I can't talk about this without thinking about Nazis, right? They're the most obvious example. If Nazis had succeeded in becoming the one world government, that would be terrible. That is a terrible form of unity because it is not based on free will and it is not based on truly like true energetic unity. That is it. It's like a distortion of unity. It is forced. It is just, you know, a group of power players just trying to force everybody into unity. But it's it's like fake and and just not. That's not that's not what what that's not what we are about. That's not what we're about at all. This is just bringing everybody into unity and it's more, maybe a better word is harmony, bringing, bringing everybody into harmony only if they want to be in harmony. Obviously, you, if, you, if you choose not to participate in harmony, if you choose not to participate in unity, nobody can force you to do that. And those of us who are on the path towards unity and harmony, it is an entirely a free will thing, entirely a free will thing. And it doesn't it only has to involve as much loss of individualization as we choose. You know, actually the Hathors, they talk, they have a, like in the higher dimensions, they have groups of souls who choose to go into a collective where they lose all of their individualization and they just resonate and hold the energy of non-duality. And they sing that out into the universe for the benefit of everybody for the benefit of everybody else and the beings in that collective lose because they're in non-duality they lose all of their individualization but they go in there willingly free will because they choose to and they can come out of that collective and they can regain their individualization when they come back out so yeah just a reminder here is that you know any loss of your individualization is optional and would only you would only do it if you felt like you wanted to do that. Maybe you maybe you want to experience non-duality and you just want to float in a non-dual collective for a while, but then you can come right back out. So yeah, you, you guys know what I mean, right? You never, as we march back to the oneness of source, we only give up our egos. We only give up our individualization when and if we feel like it for reasons of our own. It is never, it is never taken from us. It is never taken from us. So I think that is the end of the messages. So thank you so much for tuning in, guys. I hope to see you again soon. Bye.